May I request everybody to kindly be seated. We are all set to go ahead. I have the proud privilege in inviting on stage our distinguished session chair, Sri A. Robert Gerard Ravi, DDG SRI, Department of Telecommunications. Let's put our hands together to welcome Sir onto the stage. I also invite our session co-chair, Sri S. K. Marwa, scientist, G. and group coordinator, Maithi. I invite our eminent panelists, Professor Kiran Kochi, Dean R&D, IIT Hyderabad, Sri A.K. Mittal, Advisor TSDSI, Mr. Pradeep Bhardwaj, Senior Strategy Director and Head of Industry Standards, Cineverse, and Mr. Dinesh Chand Sharma, Director Standards and Public Policy, SESEI. I also have the privilege in inviting Mr. T.V. Ramachandran, President, Broadband India Forum. Namaskar and good morning and a very warm welcome to Bharat 6G 2024, the second international conference and exhibitions on 6G and beyond connectivity for a digital world, which is being hosted by Bharat Exhibitions and Broadband India Forum. And I have the privilege now in inviting Mr. T.V. Ramachandran, President, Broadband India Forum, to kindly begin the proceedings of the plenary panel discussion session with his welcome address. Thank you, Sapna. It's a proud privilege to be here today. Uh, to deliver what is billed as a welcome address, welcome to all of you for this unique event, 6G. On 6G and that to begin with standards. Uh, I must say a lot of this is primarily due to my great friend, I can't see him, where is he? Shashi Dharan. Who is, a, who is a visionary. We used to do every year a flagship event on 5G. Um, so last year, before the first 6G event, he came to me and said, next year we'll be doing on 6G. I said, Shashi, isn't it a bit early? We are still rolling out 5G, maybe after a year. But he proved to be right. He's a visionary. So yes, we have done 5G rollout remarkably, and already we are on the road to 6G. So he had in that sense foreseen that and said, and so we are very proud to work with him on this and uh, a great pleasure to say a few words before this kickoff. Um, before I go further, I must first thank the chair of the session, Sri Robert Ravi, and the co-chair, Sri S.K. Marwa, for having taken time out to be here so early in the morning. For Delhi, it's early uh, at this time. So it's a great thing that you are here to lead two people who are playing a big, big role in 6G standards. And uh, I'm very happy and proud to be there with them, as well as a distinguished panelist, including my adopted son, Professor Kiran Kuchi, <clears throat> uh, who's playing a great role in this 5G and all. Um, it is no exaggeration to say that a mobile miracle happened, has been happening for a few years now, and that India had took a remarkable role in this, again, through fantastic foresight, in 91, 92, before they crafted the tender and posted it, Sri Robert will know. At that time, in DOT, people made GSM mandatory. Mandatory, no choice on technology. Mandatory when GSM was going to be just introduced in Europe by 13 countries. See the remarkable thing? And that has had a seismic effect, and it's all because of standards. The standards have played, 2G standards, GSM standards, are probably one of the most exhaustive standards. 5,000 pages of work they did over 10 years. 
they developed, it takes 10 years to develop a G, and that's happened, 2G to 3G to 4G, 5G, and now on the road to 6G. And 5G was, as you all know, IMT 2020. So taking the standard of 10 times for maturation of a standard, we are seeing 6G as a firm reality in 2030. And if it is in 2030 reality, the standards have to be ready two years before that. Like IMT 2020, yes, standards were ready by then. But you all know that it became sort of widespread only by 2020, uh, I mean 2022. And we launched in October 2022, quite abreast of the world for the first time. And in 6G, we were, of course, in 5G, we were a little slower in starting off, but remarkable work done by DOT, Professor Bhaskar Ramurthy, IIT Madras, and Professor Kiran Kuchi in the 5G standards. You all know that they did develop 5GI at a remarkably short time. And he has been rolling out his 5G in the last few days in US. He's just returned from US, rolling it out in three cities. You're showing pictures of that, Kiran. So all that has happened because India started a bit late but did make it happen, thanks to the team of Professor Bhaskar Ramuthi, which included Professor Kiran Kuchi and others, Professor Cluto, everybody. Um, that having been the case, today, in 6G, we have started well in time. And our own Honorable Prime Minister has launched a 6G vision document, which has been adopted by uh, ITU, the globe, EPEC standard body for the globe, and where all the governments of the world are invo involved and actively playing a part. Um, in India, according to a 6G vision document released by our Honorable Prime Minister, uh, a technical technology innovations group was set up by DOT. Task forces and six task forces to explore the major pillars of 6G vision. These were task force one, multi-platform next generation networks, two, multidisciplinary net innovative solutions, three, 6G spectrum, four, 6G devices, five, international standards contribution, six, R&D finance, even finance was not overlooked. How are we going to fund that? And uh, based on the takeaways, key takeaways, they have recommended extensive research in millimeter wave and terahertz waves and uh, in fiber broadband, tactile internet and remote operations, etc. And as you all know, government has itself set up 100 labs test labs. Um, I'm very confident the way we have started in standards and with people like Sri Robert Ravi and Sri S.K. Marwa, um, we will go places. We've got a big, big team going on this with the uh, various visionary goals and we must aim to provide the standards by 27, 28, sir. You know better. I'm not going to talk to you about 3GPP or ITU or anything. It would be totally presumptuous. So I would not do that. The experts are all here. I only want to say that this is a great day, a great way to start off, and we will definitely make it happen. Um, I would like to close my short Welcome. And uh, Shashi told me, you're not to take more than five minutes, he said. So I have to follow that. Um, I would like to close with two pertinent quotes. Some people tell me, what is this all are you doing about 5G? This is it. We are just now rolling out. We have not yet got all the subscribers onto 5G. What is this? And anyway, we were late in getting into 5G. We caught up late. So we have not done very well in the past. I would only tell them, like Churchill, we are not here to open a quarrel. 
between the present and the past. If so doing, we'll be in danger of losing the future. We don't want to lose the future. The future is 60, we will have it. And like Kennedy said, John Kennedy, we are not here to curse the darkness. We are all here to light a lamp. And the best lamp lighting is with standards. And we are starting this thing right by, with standards. We did that in 5G. Shashi and I, right from beginning, the first session always used to be standards. Only then we went on to other things. Unless you are in standards, you cannot be a powerhouse in manufacturing. And that is what we lost a bit out on in 5G. And that is why we are here today. We are going to make 6G happen, not only as a service, but also in the product in manufacturing. I wish all the best to all of you. You are going to hear great things from this great panel. Thank you, sirs, once again for being with us. And all the best for the day. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for those warm words of welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time to carry forward the proceedings of our opening plenary panel discussion on research and standardization roadmaps for 6G. And I have the privilege in handing over to our session chair, Sri A. Robert Gerard Dravi, DDG SRI, Department of Telecommunications. Over to you, sir, to kindly carry forward the proceedings of the panel discussion, beginning with your opening remarks. And we have about 50 minutes for the discussions. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ramchan. That was a very good introductory stage you have set. And again, once again, I welcome the eminent panelists who are around here. Uh, just before we just uh, request the panelists to just start talking, let me put uh, just a foundation for it. Amshindras, I clearly, TV has actually articulated why standardization is really important. The government of India also has been for the last, in the last three months, we've been very actively pushing standardization. We have been uh, going around the country, conducting workshops, seminars, creating awareness even among, even at institution levels, at academic institution levels, so that we need to add, actually try to do more number of IPRs. You know, the government's intention, our ministers very clearly mentioned that we need to see that 10% of the IPR in 6G comes from the country, which means assuming around 50 to 60,000 IPRs are going to be there, around 10,000 odd IPRs need to come from this country. So we have been already into it, start, started the way ahead. One of the key things which we have been again and again mentioning is for the last five generations of this mobile, the standardization has been more or less adopted by from the other, other countries. For a change, why not 6G be adopted by the other countries? That's a, a real vision which we have. Can we have Indian RAN network or the 6G RAN network, which will be becoming a standard for the other countries. That's what is our vision. I know we, it is a very hard fought game and we have a lot of eminent uh, panelists also, members of the academic institution who are working towards, towards it. We are also rolled out an accelerated research program on 6G. I think you are already aware that DOT opened up this research program only on 6G area and we are glad to announce we have more than 470 odd different varieties of these proposals on various research activities which the team is looking at. I'm very sure the government will also start putting a lot of funds to push this entire area so that, as I think TV told, I think we, uh, if you're looking at 2930 as the uh, 6G um, uh, coming out, the standards is going to be something around 2027 and in 2025, we are going to start the discussions of the specifications for the standard, which means 18 months from today we start doing these discussions, especially on the various issues we are talking about, especially the, I've been mentioning 6G is going to be more of a distributed architecture, which means can I talk about RIS, can I talk about semantic communications, can I talk about fluid cells, fluid antennas, any different area. And we are more importantly trying to focus only in three different areas which the country could give to the world. We wanted to see how we can create an open system, a completely open openness of the standardization system. Which that's one which we are looking at. The second one is we are looking at on the spectral side. 
we we cannot be going on giving extra extra spectrum and moreover the with the with the operators already invested in in the, in the equipment we cannot have new spectrum coming in can we use the existing spectrum can we bring in new spectrum technologies like spectrum sensing uh, eugen valley direction blind valley direction can we do some spectral related activities and the most important one which is our key strength area of the country aml can i use aml in all my telecom network maybe can i bring in native transmitters receivers etc so these are the three focus areas which we have also keeping in mind for the country to move forward we look to hear more from on this research from the eminent panelists i request probably before we take lot of questions and discussions probably 5 minutes across with your permission to go around the panel say what do you think of our vision of getting this 10000 ips how do we think we should achieve and 200 standard we want 1000 10000 ips and 200 standards to be a realization and a realization of our goal of india leading the role in the 6g ran network with this as a focus i request the team members to share your thoughts on it to see how this could be achievable i'll request start from the coach uh, thank you mr robert ravi and at the outset i would like to congratulate uh, broadband india forum and <coughs> bharat exhibitions for organizing this event a very timely event at a very opportune time as both mr ramachandran and uh, uh, <coughs> mr ravi have emphasized like we are starting at the right time as far as safety standardization is concerned and the road maps are clear they have been given by mr ramachandran <coughs> so as far as mate is concerned we have been supporting standards based research in 5g and beyond since 2015 already mr ramachandran has given an introduction to the 5gi where, where mr konan kochi dr sabhaskar they were instrumental and uh, going ahead with 6g as far as mate is concerned uh, since july 21 we have already given a project for uh, standards based research in 5g and beyond and eight institutions are participating in that center for excellence in wireless technology at metras in institute of science and six other iits including uh, professor kiran kuchi representing iit hyderabad so that uh, project is progressing fine and the uh, participation in the 3gpp meetings is happening regularly but my only concern is i mean the uh, our industry representation should be more they should collaborate more with the academia whom we are supporting and even the operators they should come on board you know so that is where we are a bit lacking and through these measures these conferences and as mr ravi said that they are holding workshops let us try to come together and represent india in the 3gpp meetings as team india you know let dot mit academia industry startups let all of us come together you know that's extremely important so that is one thing and uh, we have already given you know two projects in 6g space for technology development one is 6g end to end communication systems where chief investigator is professor kiran kochi at hyderabad that project is progressing well and another 6g sub terahertz wireless um, uh, communication through intelligent reflecting services irs that is another uh, 30 crore project given to samir society for applied microwave electronics engineering research and iit metras so these two projects are already uh, progressing and besides under the first project that i mentioned lot of standards based research is happening across all these eight institutions and the contributions are being made in the 3gpp meetings so i urge the industry academia startups mm -hmm. everybody come together mm -hmm. and participate in these meetings and let us achieve that goal a very ambitious goal of 10% standard essential patents coming out of india thank you so maybe mr Lippen. thank you mr mahabad it was uh, real context setting may request professor kiran to share your thoughts on how we can really achieve our standards thank you uh, uh, first of all uh, I, i must thank uh, excellent welcome remarks by tv um, very few people would know that there was a very difficult situation around 2017 uh, then secretary dot 
uh, asked him to defuse the situation. So we both went to the board meeting of 3GPP and I have seen TV in action <laughs> and we, he defused a very complex international situation that resulted in 5G. Uh, so his contribution is remarkable but it's behind the scenes. Uh, now coming back, uh, I must thank uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, my funding agencies, uh, both uh, DOT and uh, uh, MITEE, uh, who have been uh, uh, really backing us uh, uh, for so many years, uh, uh, for the last 10, 15 years actually. Um, uh, that, that backing today has resulted in uh, some meaningful contributions in 5G and then we are in a position where we say that, hey, we, we, are now, we have now arrived and we, we, we can make impactful contribution in 6G. Now coming to specific numbers, uh, we had a very small team that contributed to 5G standards definition, about 10 people back then, between 2015 and uh, uh, around 18. That's, that's a critical phase. Of course, after that, MITEE has this new program where eight institutes have been given an opportunity to go to 3 gp now we have more than 20, 25 uh, people going to 3GPP, uh, regularly contributing to the standards definition. India's presence is felt uh, very significantly now at 3GPP. And as well as uh, ITU uh, that is led by DOT, um, uh, DDG SRI is responsible for that. Uh, there's a lot of important work going on in ITU work party 5D right now uh, with contributions from academia, industry and operators. Uh, so specific numbers, uh, we had uh, about 500 technical papers submitted over uh, an eight-year time, uh, three-year time period between 2015 and 18. Uh, that's a critical phase of 5G definition. That's about that's less. That's about one percentage of what uh, all other companies around the world has contributed. So our contribution is about one percent at the time. And uh, we had uh, declared. Uh, uh, 24 standard essential patents to uh, TSDSI, which is an organization partner of 3GPP. Uh, uh, these are, uh, there are patents and there are standard essential patents. Patents can be 10,000 or 50,000. Standard essential patents are less than one percentage of it. So our contribution in standard essential patents, what has been declared is probably again on the order of one percent, uh, I would say. Okay, these are just um, uh, back of the envelope calculations. So we need to increase our output uh, at 10x uh, to say so. So 1% to 10% jump we have to increase. So the funding has to increase 10x. The number of people going to standards has to increase 10x. So from 10 we have to reach 100. Uh, and uh, from 100 crore funding, you know, you might want to go to 1000 crore funding. These are just back of the envelope numbers. So uh, the time is right for 6G. 2023, 20, 20, 24, 25 is the activity in ITU to define the technical performance requirements next 12 months to 18 months. And uh, 3GPP will formally kickstart uh, radio access uh, uh, study phase in, uh, in around, uh, just around 12 months from now. Uh, that 6G definition will start. That will go on for about two to three years, resulting in actual specifications. So we only have a month or two to prepare ourselves because ITU process has started. Uh, we have been contributing very actively at ITU resulting in ubiquitous connectivity as a mandatory usage scenario, coverage definition has been introduced, interface interoperability has been introduced. These are big ticket uh, item contributions uh, in ITU. The, the world recognizes that. The expectations are fairly high um, uh, from what India, uh, uh, India's role in 6G as such. So I will leave it at that. Uh, we are in a good spot. Uh, funding efforts have to really scale up 10x. I will leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Professor. Uh, I think the to restart uh, is uh, spot on that. Yes, uh, even our neighboring countries have been contributing more. 10x, I would even say 20x. So we'll really, really look forward how to really scale up. We'll look at ways of exploring the same. Uh, May now request uh, A.K. Bittelsaab from TSDSI, an eminent in, again, a standardization for a long time. I'm very sure you will have his vision. I think as TSDS, it's also part as a SDO, one of the key SDOs in 3GPP. I'm very sure uh, you'll give us an advice how to 
the way forward to achieve the dream of the country, what we have in I IPRs and our standardization 60. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Robert Ravi. Yeah, so uh, uh, what has been said already by Professor Kiran Kuchi and uh, Dr. Marwaha and Robert Ravi, I think uh, getting forward from there, just uh, giving you the background, TSDSI, most of the people uh, sitting here may be knowing, but for some of those who have not come across TSDSI, it's a Telecom Standards Development Society India. It's a membership-driven body where uh, all kinds of stakeholders from telecom and vertical industries can become members. And this is a government of India recognized uh, body, telecom, only standards body in India. Uh, so uh, 5GI is something which was contributed to ITU uh, through TSDSI and as I already said, Professor Kiran Kuchi, then Kruto, then Professor Radhakrishnan and Bhaskar as the head. Uh, we, you know, did lots of uh, work at technical level and process level to get it through and uh, his efforts, uh, he had lots of efforts to uh, get that into ITU. So, uh, as far as 6G is concerned, uh, TSDSI started work uh, right in 2020 uh, with a study on use cases and technology trends. And that is, as that is study continued, ITU also took up the work of defining some uh, use cases and technology trends uh, at that level. So that study as it was going on in TSDSI, we, our members from TSDSI, they brought in contributions for ITU and those contributions were accepted and they are part of whatever has come out as a framework document which is specifies by ITU what are the use scenarios and what are the technical capabilities which are required for 6G. So those contributions, they started going right from 2021. And uh, after, uh, once that activity was over, uh, TSDSI is now working on a uh, number of 60 related items for studies and uh, standardization. And some of the standards uh, which are under works are or the based on study and then standardization is on the waveforms, the kind of waveforms which are required, 100 gigahertz or sub terahertz uh, uh, wave uh, studies uh, for uh, you know hotspots and uh, capacity based communications whatever applications it has and also on the cordless RAN so I can uh, count number of them but just to say that there are number of 60 related items which are already uh, on the anvil uh, work is in progress at a fast pace and our first 6G standard on reconfigurable intelligent surfaces or RIS is going to be out maybe uh, in three weeks time from now. It is already done, it is uh, undergoing different internal approval processes mm -hmm. and it will be the first standard and immediately after that we will bring out another one on RIS to add additional features. So that is going to be the first 6G standard uh, from India on RIS. So idea is that uh, TSDSI is basically a platform where all stakeholders they come together because People, if they work in silos, they do not know how to carry forward that idea into standards or how to carry forward that IPR into uh, global standards. So when they sit together, they understand each other's requirement uh, and guidance and also see the overall scope, how, what else can be done. That is how the standards are actually driven and created. So uh, the, I, the, the basic process, what we feel is that we should choose some items which are, you know, where the industry is already working or if not working, then we can uh, take up some research items. Uh, maybe during the course of discussions, we can discuss more about that. Uh, so if we select some items on uh, where standards can be made, industry comes together, maybe 5, 10, 15, 20 areas and those standards we create because time is running fast. And as once 3G takes up the work of 6G, the industry across the world would have already done their homework on those areas. So we need not, we cannot wait. We have to start now. As TSC has already started, we need to multiply that work. And for that, academia, industry and other, st other stakeholders have to come together. Research has to, you know, uh, go on full speed so that we are ready. Once the uh, real work starts in 3GVP and ITU, uh, we are ready with the research areas and we are able to contribute. Otherwise, we will be left out. So, this is the opportune time. We select areas, create some standards on that. And as far as IPRs are concerned, once you create a standard, 
if one standard can create, have multiple, uh, maybe tens and hundreds of IPRs into one standard, it depends what kind of a standard we are creating. So that is how we can escalate or enhance the number of IPRs which can go into our standard. And it's not, standards are never static. So whatever we do, they will be continuously getting upgraded depending on where the world is going, the, where the feedback of the market and the stakeholders. So IPRs will keep on getting added. So by the time global standards are getting ready, we will have a good base of IPRs and uh, then effort will be to get them included in uh, the global standards. So the success rate of that depends on how many people are getting involved into creating standards now. So, uh, so uh, my suggestion would be, or as a country, we, what we should think is that uh, as early as possible the stakeholders come together. TSD is a platform where they can work together and create standards. Rest we can discuss during the panel discussion. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, sir. I think this is very, very, very interesting and promising. I think the, probably the one of the first RIS paper from the country. That is, uh, we are already moving towards the direction. I, we, we really should thank uh, TSDIZ. Yeah. So this is going to be the first stepping stone of the 60 efforts for standardization effort. We, I know there are a lot of other areas and RIS, as, as he has correctly articulated, uh, improvements on this. We sincerely hope we are on the right track. Thank you, sir, for this uh, thing. Now, I request Mr. Pradeep, I think, from Sinivas, from your perspective, what do you think from outside, from the industry point of view, where do we stand and what we should really do at, with, with all our thought process, with our ideas, with our vision, what do you think should be the take to achieve this vision? Thank you and good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I think a lot of um, interesting thoughts. I think uh, just uh, picking up from um, uh, where Mr. Ramchandran started, I think it's so heartwarming to, uh, to hear that um, uh, the, the vision outlined by the Prime, Honorable Prime Minister of India actually um, uh, emphasizes R&D and even funding, as you say, as, the, as a fundamental pillar. It doesn't happen anywhere. I, I, should, uh, I should be very upfront about that. Uh, so I think it's, um, it's uh, very, very heartwarming indeed uh, because unless you invest, I think it's, uh, uh, success will not come. And I think that is precisely where we, uh, as a country, India, India could not uh, deliver on the potential it had in 5G. Uh, but now, obviously, uh, we are seeing, as we have heard from some of the speakers, I think um, India is uh, boiling the pot um, um, one of the first uh, uh, countries to boil the pot and at this point of time uh, discussions like this we are actually boiling the pot we are not stirring the, the actual pot yet we will get to that stage um, but if you look at um, 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 obviously um, um, my previous speaker he talked about uh, time time is running fast I think um, that actually is one of my worries um, about 5G, uh, we actually did things a bit hastily. If you look at uh, 4G and 5G, if you compare the standardization roadmap, in 4G, we spent 48 months, 21 months for the study, and 27 months for the actual standardization within 3GPP. Good 48 months. What did we do in 5G? 12 months for study and um, I think overall it was 27. So another 15 months for the standardization, indeed. So 12 plus 15. 27 months we rolled out 5G standards and that too. So that was I think one of the mistakes globally I should say. The standards bodies made. We, we kind of rushed into it. We should have taken more time. Because if you look at it, not just that the, each technology generation is more complex, it is also more encompassing. It is affecting each and every domain on the planet. Gone are the days when mobile technology just for one or two particular use cases. Every industry vertical, every industry domain is going to get affected in a positive way. They would embrace mobile for a lot of things. 
and that is precisely why we should spend more time so we should allow for more time to study properly how we should approach this new technology generation and that i must say i'm so pleased to see that is precisely what we are seeing at the moment works rightly start as you rightly said works started in 2020 to um, uh, start conceptualizing some of the concepts some of the use cases um, uh, how we should approach this whole thing and um, and now we are starting to see some of the results um, so obviously in 4g we all know the the triangulated concept the arch the the architecture of triangle um, the the well known EMBB and uh, MMTC and URLLC we know that triangle um, but now I think the approach we are taking uh, as an industry is moving away from triangles to circles so now we know this uh, this wheel the architecture of wheel that is that is uh, how 6G would be different from 5G and we all know that we can fit a triangle in a circle takes me back to the good old days of studying trigonometry so um, so i think uh, we are indeed fitting the triangle in a circle so we are fitting in embb mmtc and urllc uh, within that circle of 6g uh, vision and architecture dream and uh, we are extending obviously the age old concepts of 5g so we are extending e embb to immersive communications we are extending mmtc to uh, massive communications and we are obviously extending URLLC to hyper reliable uh, low latency communications but on top of that 6G is not just about enhancing 5G so we are actually adding in lot more things obviously through the rest of the day we would discuss uh, in more details um, some of those concepts that new concepts that 6G would bring but I think the exciting thing there is and it's a it's a given I think we did not spend much time in 5g emphasizing on some of the most obvious things we define a lot of very technical concepts but we left out the focus on the basic things now you would all be pleased to see that out of the 15 capabilities that underpin this uh, uh, wheel architecture of wheel vision in 6g there are basic things like coverage there are basic things like interoperability and I think that is where India in, in particular can play a huge role because we have these use cases we have these problems and we have the capability and capacity to demonstrate how a technology should fulfill the requirements in terms of interoperability because given the diversity we have in this country and it was I did not know when you said that you know the the contribution around uh, ubiquitous connectivity actually came from India I did not know that and I think um, uh, as, as an Indian I am so proud to hear that so um, I think uh, we should invest more time in these kind of uh, building up a very strong foundation around coverage around interoperability around sustainability around um, um, uh, some of these uh, new uh, new capabilities how do we enhance security and resilience that is one of the capability that has been added and um, and as a country we obviously we play huge emphasis around that so I think these are let us say some of the low-hanging fruit for India to uh, build upon and contribute to so look forward to the discussion through the rest of the day thank you thank you Pradeep I think that was uh, we have talked where we need to actually put our uh, thought process here your spot on actually some of the areas which which is our requirement which India country wants is the one which we need to focus I'll come back later on how we can talk more on it before that I may, may request uh, Mr. Dinesh I think you can also put your words and thoughts how we can achieve our vision thank you sir thank you Bharat exhibition for giving me this opportunity as I represent European standardization in India, when we work closely with our Indian stakeholders on both research and standardization, before I could comment on the IPR part of it, how to strengthen it and what we're doing in India about 6G, but let me start with EU. I mean, in EU, as we all know, uh, HEXA, which was a big scale research project, 
It was started in January 2021. And this particular big pilot had uh, 25 partners. Recently, this, this phase two of HEXA2 has been launched. And now these 25 partners to this research project has become 40. So that is a scale the research is ongoing when we talk about 6G. We all understand the 6G right now is at the research and the pre-standardization. I think Sir highlighted that the candidate for 6G will be starting rolling out at 3GPP around 25. So it's the right time when we talk about research and standardization. The second side of it is the 6G IA. 6G IA, which is a 6G Smart Network Services Industry Association. And we have a counterpart now, Bharat 6G Alliance. 6G IA uses the funding for research and take it to ITSI. And through ITSI, they take it to 3GPP. So that's a road they always take it, even if it is a small scale uh, research project or a big scale research project. Another good activity which EU has done is they have developed a code of standardization for researchers. This is a very good document, which whether it is an SME or a startup or a big research organizations, they should follow this code of standardization so that they are aware of when they do this research, they participate in the standardization activity as early as possible so that they could contribute to global platform utilizing a platform like TSDSI to 3GPP. So this is a good document and I have been working with Bara 6G Alliance to study this, make an amendment suitable for Indian context and develop code of standardization for researchers. Uh, now this, we already have a counterpart. We have a mission, we have a vision, we have a Bara 6G Alliance, we have a TSDSI. TSDSI has developed this RIS, which is perfectly timed because now we are ready to put it forward as soon as the standardization work happened at 3GPP. Uh, 5G I is a success story, so participation have gone up, we are participating more regularly, but I think we need to do more. Now, when we talk, now let's come back to India. Now, when we talk about Indian innovations, startups are playing a very major role here in the country. Even SMEs are playing it, but they don't have big pockets. When we talk about research, it needs money. It needs money in a way that they could do the research, they could participate in the standardization activities, or they could outsource it to academias to continue their ideas, their innovations to get it standardized through a research. Which also means that we have to have a funding mechanism in a way, while we can continue with the academia, but we need, we need to go beyond academias. In EU, when we do a call for proposal for researchers, most of the time, or almost all the time, it's consortium of the partners who bid for these research projects. And as part of this consortium, there is an academia, there is an SME, there is an industry, there is any kind of stakeholders who could contribute on that subject. So in my opinion, in India also, we should, while we can continue with the researchers, because the academia do a fantastic job in doing research, but they could have more stakeholders from the beginning, so that there is a taker, you know, taker of that research, taker of that innovations to get it commercialized by ut utilizing a platform like 3GPP. The second aspect is not only fund the research, but fund the participation of these SMEs and startups into the standardization activities. When I say standardization activities, this also needs a continuous participation and contributions, which needs money. So even these SMEs and startups should be funded and supported for TSDSI participation through a free membership possibly, funded by the government, and then they should also participate in 3GPP. There should be a regular 3GPP participation because this meeting rolls around the world, they go, they talk about it, they develop, it's more lobbying to get your particular product innovations and solutions included in the specification. So I think that is what we have to do it. Achieving a target of 200,000 IPRs is not is, is not impossible, even we can do more. But I think Kiran did highlight it, having a patent is one thing, but making them essential is what we should count on. So today's innovation, it should get standardized by utilizing platform like 3GPP. 
which means it should go into the commercial. Once it goes into the commercial, we really capitalize on these patent development, which would require continuous participation, contributions, lobbying, and get your innovations standardized. I think that is the path we have to take it, and that is the path we must continue doing it to have a real contribution. And once these patents become essential, even the parliament report today, uh, EU parliament report today talked about that even today 200 patents from India exist on 6G. We have, we have patents, which means we have done the innovations. Now it's a time to get it standardized, utilizing a platform like 3GPP, which will start in 2025, which means we have to be ready with the research and the pre-standardization contributions. And that is what I can say, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dinesh. I think uh, that is again thought. But just to add on, yeah, we are also working on a, a scheme where how we can see the startup in academia regularly go and attend this GPP. Uh, we will soon come out with some schemes on that particular aspect also from the government side. Just again going back to Professor Kiran, uh, just a two, two quick questions to you. What do you think should be the main area, research areas, which we should concentrate in 6G? And I think while we all know that there is a lot of areas of, that is going to be under development, do you think it will be wise that we select a few designated academic institutions and say these institutions will work only in these areas and then so that we will have a focused approach of moving towards our standardization? What are your thoughts on this, Professor? Yeah, thank you. So, you know, we had this 220 crore project, 5G test bed. We should draw from those experiences. Okay. Uh, at the time, there was practically no industry when uh, this 220 crore project was given to some, some number of uh, academic institutions. Uh, of course, the, uh, the institutions did their best. They produced uh, very good outcomes. There were spillover effects. Companies were started. Huge manpower was created. IPs were created and so on and so forth. But fundamentally, to make a commercial impact, uh, uh, academia uh, has some one role to play but it's ultimately the industry that takes these ideas forward and creates economic impact. Uh, this must be uh, kept uh, at the forefront. So it is always between, uh, if, if, academic, if industry doesn't have all the wherewithal to do research, they can draw from the academic well all the depth of knowledge that they can draw it from, okay? So it has to be a, a joint effort. This is, this is what happens in the US and uh, Europe and uh, Japan and other places. Their academia uh, is always there and their industry is there. So we should pair academia with industry. Uh, that of course we can't force pairing, but it has to happen naturally. Uh, they should come together and let them work out all the you know IP sharing aspects, whatever is, uh, the, is required. But there should be a, a, an industry fronting it uh, along with the academia to uh, create this, uh, the, the impact that, that we need. That's number one. Coming back to your original question on what are the most important things that we should focus on. 5G is deployed today and uh, we have to keep that in the back of our mind that when 6G is introduced, what is that uh, this evolution is going to be like? This has to be thought through very carefully because operators are very uh, touchy about this whole, whole thing in terms of cost implications. So for India um, uh, and the rest of the world, the learnings from millimeter wave are very clear, okay? I don't have to reiterate what those lessons are, but it's, it's there for everybody to see. So, uh, so dealing with high frequencies is a, is a, is a, is a, is a very difficult uh, undertaking, very high frequencies, anything beyond, you know, like I would say five gigahertz, you know, the Wi-Fi access point at your home, it works only in one room, not in the other room, okay? So the difficult problem that needs to be solved is find the nearest frequency band close to 5G and make sure those signals propagate through buildings. And in order to do that, you need to do a lot of research. You have to throw a lot of antennas at it, uh, find the right frequency band, uh, make sure you get indoor coverage with those frequencies. Then only it's called a cellular system, otherwise it becomes a backhaul. If you want to build a cellular system that uses frequencies beyond 3.67 gigahertz, which is the cutoff today, find the right frequency in the neighborhood of that and do research to make sure in the next 12, 24 months it is usable. If, it is, if there's no such frequency, 
then we only have what we have. I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. I think I may request Ms. Middalji from the TSDSI point of view. I will have only two things. What do you think that we should have a clear research roadmap, standard and research roadmap? What is looking at what is happening across the world, the global vision roadmap, and what is our standards vision? What, what do you think? Can you tell us more on it? And we also know that the government has already released a 6G vision mission. We are very clear on what we wanted to do. So what do you think key, one or two key areas that is required to encourage this research innovation that can increase standard contribution in 3GPP? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so as I already mentioned, uh, TSDSI as an organization is a membership driven organization. And our members are definitely alive to the situation that what is happening in the 6G world. Only thing is that <coughs> what we need to uh, focus is <coughs> where we can actually make a significant impact on based on our current capabilities or some capabilities which are there but they are, we are not able to bring them forward because of lack of funding for doing research or lack of funding for participation in the standards bodies. So, uh, but keeping that aside, if we want to talk about some focus areas, of course, industry will be, you know, in a better position to say. But what we see is that the, our, our uh, reference point is, which can be immediately taken, is the usage scenarios and technical, require, technical capabilities which are required for 6G. And from among them, for example, the recent workshop which happened uh, in 3GPP, uh, to work out what kind of usage scenarios the world is looking at. Our focus came on security, uh, resilience of the network, uh, the sustainability part, and uh, also on uh, the usage scenario on sensing uh, and uh, native, uh, native AI on the network so that you can improve the performance. So, but when we break them down into uh, the doables, for example, for AI. So AI will be applicable, for example, for optimization of the radio interfaces. So AI at the RAN in the RAN is one part which can be taken up. We are very good at IT. Nobody can beat us. So if the IT industry plus or the IT strength of the inter our telecom industry and the research can be taken into account, the native AI based uh, RAN and even the core and end-to-end -end, uh, network performance improvement <coughs> part can be taken. That is one important uh, area which we look at. Number, uh, another area which we look at is about, uh, because we are talking of sustainability, the energy saving or the energy efficiency part, and also how do we uh, become, you know, how do we contribute into the circular economy part when we design. So uh, in the design of equipment, what is being said is that security by design should be put in place, apart from what we do as a overall, uh, uh, over, overlay security and next thing coming is the quantum security. We are, we have lots of things going on in quantum technologies in different institutes. Only thing is that they have to come together and for 6G, quantum security will be very important because by the time it is being rolled out, the quantum communications or the quantum computers will be in place and the, the quantum security will become very important. So this may look to be a, a side area of 6G but it is very important. Uh, for, uh, you know, for, where this, for 6G to live, the quantum security has to come in. And TSDSI is already working on some topics on uh, quantum communications. We are trying to bring in the quantum industry and the research institutes into TSDSI so that they can work together. Another area which we see is that development of uh, the application level standards or the uh, use case scenarios we can take into account, which can go into the technical capability built up, for example, metaverse. Uh, digital twins and the applications for uh, extended reality. So all of them have uh, impact on the capabilities and the performance scenario of the 6G. So industry has to identify which one, which area they have to work. And right now because ITU is working on the technical performance requirements, so there is no time left actually. So we have to contribute that which, which of the parameters we want to contribute. We, we know that we can, by research we can say, okay, this is the parameter we want to achieve and then do it 
in the and achieve it in the research later so that we can contribute to that in in 3gbp so in summary i think the the point uh, we can extend it for a long discussion because there are lots of dimensions to this but in summary idea is again to identify from the use case scenarios the technical capabilities and then where we, our strength lies and in currently in tsdsi as i already mentioned we are working on the 6g architecture we are working on coreless ran which can provide you know light uh, uh, network uh, radio access network uh, for specific applications and we are working on the waveforms at uh, sub terahertz uh, communications so i think out of these areas and some more which are being talked about in industry we can we have to sit together identify and uh, we can definitely find out a number of them uh, for meeting our goals thank you thank you mr mutel i think let me go to the other side mr dinesh you were talking about lot of activities with bharat 6g alliance did with the thing now you, we we already know that the implementation of 5g technologies was one of the fastest in the world our country was the fastest we are more than around 400 hot pts of only 5g up and running with this fast roll out uh, where do you think that line need to be drawn that it should be a smooth evolution towards 6g i mean i think you answered this question by saying evolution ever the technology has evolved starting from 2g it was always an evolution not a revolution but then of course the architectures the waveform the use cases becomes different i mean as we all know the demand hungriness of data is increasing we just want to click and then we want the information to be in front of us the iot which has become massive iot will become more and more iot related use cases so going back to your question that you know as the road map is defined 5g will run in parallel while the 6g research and pre standardization activities will happen uh, i mean of course industry demands it but i think we have to capitalize on 5g a lot of investment and gone into it potential of 5g is still there a lot of use cases if you see the three triangle three triangle side of it various use cases does exist we have to make use of those use cases so 5g will run in parallel while we start the journey of 6g research and pre standardization and then start evolving it i, I think release 20 is what we are targeting and and release 18 work is ongoing so release 19 will also be there for 5g advance uh, what we should do it i think uh, uh, Mithil Saab does did touch upon the six dimensions of 6G. There are various use cases. While we can continue on the core architecture point of view or from the wave waveform point of view, that should be a partnership. When you talk about a core architecture, it's more collaborations, more cooperations. Don't reinvent the wheel. I mean. we all understand when we talk about telecom standardization it cannot be local it cannot be regional it has to be global our target should be when it comes to uh, uh, architecture or waveform we must exchange knowledge we must partner and collaborate with ongoing efforts but when it comes to use cases ris is one good example it the work was happening long back but yes we have taken the boat and then we are working on it uh, so the six dimensions which we call it like uh, internet of senses xr is one disaster has a one very good use cases in india for example we could focus on fully automated infrastructure which will make use use of ai more and more is what we should focus on you you highlighted that ai ml is 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 one of them spectral efficiency will be will be a part of it but then when we talk about spectral efficiency we must harmonize our spectrum with the region because if we have to bring the economies of scale our spectrum should be harmonized which means we should start the work on spectrum availability from now before we actually bring the 6g in india so that we are available in the same band which has been harmonized for our region so that we could achieve the economies of scale so there are various means and ways but bharat 6g alliance is a good platform sir and i think Uh, uh mr kiran kuchi did highlighted industry participation when government does a funding now when we talk about government we have department of telecom we have mighty we have dst we have these organ these ministries who are responsible for this telecom and it part of it joint funding from the government giving it to the bharat 6g alliance and bringing some money from the industry 
doing an open call for tender. Let the company, let the consortium come forward and take those research subject. So when we have identified the research subject, we must capitalize on the platform like Bara 6G Alliance with a joint funding with industry. And I'm sure industry will come forward and bid for it as a consortium. Once industry is part of the research and innovations, I don't think so. They'll go away saying, oh, this is not what I worked on. If I worked on, I will make sure that it is, it is getting used and it becomes convertible into standard essential patent, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was really interesting. Actually, we, Government of India, we are also looking at the 360 views on not only for, with the Indian grown, we are also talking to Ericsson's, Nokia's, and out to and Qualcomm, Intel, AMD, to see that how can we have the industry funding of 50-50 in these research areas. That's also the government is taking steps in that direction also. I am sure something will come out shortly on that. Before I think I close down the session, I think I should throw one question to TV. TV, now with all the, the latest release touching more on convergence happening with the generation of mobile technologies, especially the 5G and the Wi-Fi coming in, what do you think your broadband firm is going to, what, what, do, you, what, do, you, what do you think the, the way forward is going to happen, especially with 6G and the 5G is still coming up? Thank you. Uh, I don't know whether just, can I hear me? Can you hear me? Oh. Um, thank you, sir, for that question. It's a great one and very difficult to answer, but I think it gives an opportunity to underline that it is not just a G which is at work. I think Dinesh also mentioned that the 6G IA, you need a total infrastructure. Unless you have the supporting infrastructure, you cannot reach it to all. The anchor will be the G. But supporting infrastructure of fiber, we are talking of fiber in a big way. In India, total fiberization, total fiberization for backbone as well as backhaul together, we are hardly one-tenth of our peers. As far as I'm concerned, the peers are only USA and China. So I will benchmark against those only. Uh, we are hardly one-tenth of them. So we have to scale up. And this is total fiberization, which includes tower fiberization. Tower fiberization is only one element of that. In tower fiberization, we are at 44% and we need to get to 100% for 6G. So that is again another thing which we have to action and I'm sure they're all working on this in the task forces. Uh, third thing which is not commonly recognized is on Wi-Fi. The 6G vision document, Robert hinted at this, 6G will not work if you don't have 50 million hotspots. That's what the Prime Minister's vision statement has said. 50 million public Wi-Fi hotspots. Without that, you will not be able to download. Whatever be the G, there are certain constraints. So you need, when you come into a room, you always ask for the internet. So that is going to be more and more so with the higher frequencies, like Kiran hinted at. So the, we need that, and today we are not even 1 million hotspots. So that's a big opportunity for entrepreneurs, a big opportunity for fibers, a big opportunity for rollout everywhere. So, and last but not least, sir, um, I think two, three of our panelists talked about how we can get more in 10x on IPRs and patents. What is required there is also safety of our IPRs. Why are some of our own people going abroad to register their IPRs? We must make it stronger in India. We look to government to help out on that. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, TV. I think, I think with this, we can close down this uh, session. I think it, I thank all the eminent speakers, our panelists here, who are really enlightened about the way forward. I'm very sure we'll, this discussion will continue a long way forward to clearly put a roadmap in our standardization efforts. 
thank you one once again once again thank you very much indeed let's put our hands together ladies and gentlemen for all our eminent panelists as i request our eminent session chair to kindly do the honors of presenting a token of gratitude on behalf of the organizers to all our panelists we begin with presenting to our session co-chair shri sk marwa thank you very much indeed sir for sparing your valuable time and being here with us we present to professor kiran kuchi thank you sir to shri ak mithil ji advisor tsdsi we present to mr pradeep bhardwaj thank you sir and to mr dinesh chand sharma director standards and public safety scsi thank you ravi sir for doing the honors may i now request mr tv ramachandran president bif to present a token of gratitude and appreciation to our session chair shri a robert gerard ravi ddg sri department of telecommunications thank you mr ramachandran for doing the honors thank you sir for wonderfully chairing the session and may i request for a group photograph of the panel before we close the proceedings of this session and ladies and gentlemen i would request everyone to kindly remain seated as we are straight away moving towards the inaugural session now we will just take a few minutes to set up the stage for the inaugural session we would request everyone to kindly remain seated